Japan has many parks that we can enjoy and some of them are free. In this video, I spent my last day in Tokyo enjoying my time in Ueno Park before going to Kyoto and starting my adventure in Kansai area. And here's how it went. I started my day by taking photos in Asakusabashi, near my hostel using Kodak Gold 200. Oke, okay, jadi ini hari ketiga gua di Tokyo dan hari terakhir gua juga di Tokyo karena besok gua atau ntar malam gua harus ke Kyoto naik bis malam. Dan kali ini gua bakal nge-shoot pakai film Kodak Gold set di so 200 box speed. Sorry banget ini backlight karena cahaya mataharinya enggak dari belakang. Tapi nggak apa-apa. Oke. Okay. It was such a good day because the sky was clear unlike the day before. I took a walk around Asakusa area and saw a small boat house in Sumida River. The boats here were used mostly for a boat cruise and a boat restaurant, which Asakusa is famous for. I love the shape of this house and also the sign. The glow from direct sunlight is a nice touch, and I think really suited for Kodak Gold. I really love Gold's brownish tone. Last year, since I also stayed near Asakusa, Kuramai area to be exact, I also often saw that big panel building. Having the chance to see it again this year, nostalgia from last year's trip was rushing in my head. I think it's around 7 in the morning, so the street was rather empty. And I like this photo. It's so minimalistic. After that, I saw more people start doing their activity, like exercising with their dog, and people who were going to work. I love witnessing these moments. This is one of the photos that I also like. The light and the shadow create such a nice leading line. The shadow from the person in the front also creates such a nice shape because of the morning sun. Zebra Cross is one of my favorite places to take photos. Sometimes I can get a good photo from this, but oftentimes it's just some random meaningless photo that I hesitantly took. But I like this one a lot, a textbook example of minimalistic photography. And this one which I like better than the previous one. I waited in this position looking for an interesting moment to capture. And I got this. It's fine, I guess. 
You see, Kodak Gold is not my main film of choice. Between all those consumer films from Kodak, I like Color Plus the most. But seeing Kodak Gold Stone in Japan is somewhat pleasing to me. So bringing one or two Kodak Gold film in Japan is pretty rewarding so far. Then I had the sudden urge to go to Kuramai for nostalgia reasons. It is a 2 kilometers walk and I don't mind it at all. It was such a good day anyway. Japan has so many beautiful toilets and this is one of them, the most unique one. It is called Umaya Bashikiwa Toilet, the famous toilet with four faces near Umaya Bridge in Kuramai. It was even featured in Toilets Agogo, a zine by photographer Hidefumi Nakamura documenting unique toilets across Japan. And I really wish I brought my wider lens here. And here I use 50mm 1.8 lens from Nikon. Seeing Umaya Bridge like this really brings back memories from last year, since I walk past this bridge every day. I remembered entering this Tokyo Metro entrance every morning to start my trip during those days. It was such a wonderful journey. This is my last photo from Kodak Gold. We go to Ueno Park in the afternoon. Here, I use Ilford HP5 which I rated at 1600 ISO. There is almost no reason why you should use 1600 ISO at 12pm during a sunny day, but I did it anyway. I guess one of my only reasons is to get a grainy photo like this with a high contrast, which I think the best way to use Ilford HP5. I love the black color. It's so contrasty and sharp. I really love this photo too. Such a nice hair. I like those three birds in my photo. And this photo is quite nice too. Apparently, there was some kind of food festival, but I didn't get the chance to enter it. Now I regret it and I wish I entered it. And I hope you enjoyed this performance from this virtuoso. <laughs> Ueno Park also has many Tori gates, so you don't have to go to Fushiminari in Kyoto. I'm sorry but I just had to do it since I was using black and white film and I saw such a beautiful komorebi from where I sit. 
If you know, you know. Not long after that, an Oji-san was sitting next to me. He greeted me in Japanese, asking where I'm from, and I could still speak back to him using my bad Japanese. But from that point forward, I couldn't understand what he was saying. Maybe I could only cut one or two words, but after that, I was lost in translation. But I still smiled back at him and said sumimasen wakaranai at the end. But he just kept talking and hear how it goes more or less. Japan, apa? Japan. Apa? After. Apa? Uh, so. Uh, so. Uh. <laughs> And at the end, I let him talk to my phone to use Google Translate. And I think that he said he was sorry that I have to accompany a drunk old man like him. He was such a nice old man and he really reminds me of my late grandpa. I miss him. Before he left, I asked to take photos of him and here's the photo. Do you want to know how much I love Japan? Seeing this view of a random pond almost made me cry just because of how calm and serene it is. Even every inch of movement from the leaves moves me. And now, time for my other favorite film, Koda Color Plus. This is actually my first time using it in Japan, so I'm curious about it as well. And it was so good. The color was punchy and saturated. I rated the film at 100 ISO, the best way to shoot Color Plus in my opinion, because you can get that pastel look that you often got from Portra 400. There are also so many big fish in this pond. I think it's a carp. Then, I managed to get a sequence of a duck trying to dive. I like it so much. Especially this one. I managed to time my shutter correctly and I got this duck right in the middle of its jump. Then I saw these twin trees and of course I had to photograph them. The tree on the right is a little overexposed, but I think it's still fine. 
I love color plus color rendition so much. The combination of its yellow and green is so pleasing to my eye. Near the exit, I saw an old man feeding the birds and the ducks, and of course I had to take photos of it. I like all of it, it speaks for itself. I saw one of my favorite JDM car ever, Nissan Skyline GTR R34. Took a couple of photos with my digital camera. This is such a beautiful car, even the number plate has 34 in it. Unrelated to the car, but I took this photo of a certain building. I think it says Bibimbap House. From what I know, it sells a great cheap Korean food, including bibimbap. I really love the falling light that creates such a nice shadow shape on the building. After that, I went back to Ueno Park to go to Ueno Station. Then I saw this pigeon lady. It was such a beautiful scene. Then I went to Tokyo Station to spend my remaining time there before taking my midnight bus to Kyoto. On my way, I saw the same skyline that I photographed that afternoon. I brought back my luggage after I stored it in the locker room in Tokyo Station. From Tokyo Station, I had to go to the Yaesu North exit parking area to wait for my bus. It is full of people because it's Friday night. If you book your bus from the internet, this most likely will be your waiting area for the bus. And now I have to catch some sleep on the bus before arriving in Kyoto. I think that's it for today's video. It was such a short stay in Tokyo but I enjoyed it very much. And I think I got some good photos from the session. I don't know, maybe I will use it for my future projects. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed the video, and see you on my next adventure in Kansai region.